Hello everybody, I'm Richard Older, and as always, welcome to the channel. Who likes Big Bluff Forts? I do. Yesterday I posted a video where I showed you how to make 300, 400, 500, and 600 horsepower from a big block Ford. So while you're here, wanting to make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do cool tests just like that. And since that was part one, let's take a look now at part two. We're going to go from 700 to 1100 horsepower on our big block Ford. So why am I still talking? Let's check it out. Okay, guys, make sure before we get going here, take a look back at part one. You'll see we ended up, we went from 300 to 400 to 500 and to 600 horsepower combinations on our big black Fords. Now we're stepping up, as I alluded to in the introduction, we're stepping up to making even more power. And this is going to be our 700 horsepower version of a big black Ford. And we're starting out with a stroker motor. And you'll see, in fact, all of these bigger, more powerful motors are, in fact, bigger stroker combinations. This was, this was, started out this was run during a test where the guys at West Tech and maybe one of the other magazine guys compared the Super Cobra Jet heads that came with this crate motor to a set of Airflow Research then new Airflow Research head this isn't a test that I ran this is a test that they ran but I'm just kind of pirating their data here so we'll take a look at this combination this was a Ford crate motor it was a 521 cubic inch big block you know 460 base stroker motor it was 10 to 1. They put a good size camshaft in it, 780 lift, 275, 284 degree duration, and 110 plus 5. They had 2 and an eighth inch chassis headers on it. It was, uh, they, they used a single four barrel, a single plane intake manifold with a 1050 Holly Dominator on it. This was from Ford Racing, but I think it was, uh, I think Edelbrock are the people that actually made this. It had roller rockers. It, it had an MST distributor. It had, had kind of all the things that you'd want on, on a good size crate motor. And it had to start out with a set of Ford Racing Super Cobra Jet heads. I think, or I think John Kazi uh, was the guy that designed these and these work really well. In fact, I had run the, these heads before on another combination. We're going to refer back to that in just a minute when I, t when I tell you. Um, there's just, it just looks like there's some, something weird here a little bit with the curve. But run with the Super Cobra Jet heads. This 514 produced 652 horsepower and 649 uh, foot-pounds of torque. And right off the bat, to me, that seems like it's a little on the low side. I know the Super Cobra Jet heads are not great, but we've made more power than that. And it seems odd that the torque would be that close to the horsepower, given how much camshaft this thing had. So it just seems odd to me. The other thing that looks weird is right here at uh, 4,700 RPM. Um, it just looks like the curve is rising up like we would kind of expect it to do and to keep going and making good power. And then it kind of, you know, tapers off in terms of the gain. And I thought that that was weird in looking at these results. And then I also went back and looked at when I ran a set of these heads and we compared them to Cobra Jet heads. Now the Super Cobra Jet head made more than the Cobra Jet head as we would have expected it to. It was a better head. But we saw a similar thing. We saw a weird thing happen there where the power gains were kind of climbing up really fairly well. And then they kind of, <laughs> then the gains kind of tapered off the amount that you were getting. So I don't know if this is a function of that Super Cobra Jet head or if something else is going on. But at any rate, I'm not really looking at this comparison so much. We're just looking to show you basically how to make 700 horsepower on this combination and the way that we did it on this 521 or the way that they did it on this 521 inch motor was to add some Airflow Research 270 heads on it. And you can see the power curve. Now that's kind of more like what we would expect from, from this kind of combination. And run with the Airflow Research heads. We know that they're better than the factory 460 heads. And, and it's a pretty good bet that they're better than a Super Cobra head also, uh, being that they're newer and they've had a lot more time to develop them. But these work very well. 727 horsepower. And peak torque was 674 foot-pounds of torque. They did really well. Kind of the thing that we expect from Airflow Research, having done lots of stuff with them. But now let's jump in and take a look and see what it takes to make 800 horsepower. Stepping things up to our 800 horsepower combination. This one actually was fairly simple. It started out as a Ford Racing Crate motor. This was 514 inches, and this was way back when they offered that. I'm not even sure they offer this crate motor anymore, but it was a 514. We had the single plane Ford motor, Motorsports aluminum intake manifold. Like I said, I think it was a uh, an Edelbrock Victor or Super Victor. We had uh, a, a 
1050 mighty demon carburetor on there or, or the the big uh dominator size demon carburetors it had super cobra jet aluminum heads on at this time which we had replaced i think that thing originally came with cobra jet heads or you guys let me know in the comments you can correct me if i'm not wrong uh if or if i'm wrong this thing had an extreme energy 292 it came from ford i think with this solid roller camshaft in it which was a 671 678 lift a 254 260 degree duration split on a 110 degree lobe separation angle we had uh big block headers on it from back in the day it had it had an msd distributor on it and then run in this manner our 514 produced 643 horsepower and even more torque 662 foot pounds of torque so it's interesting that this is um this combination made more torque than horsepower, but this is the way that we had run it on the engine dyno. So how do we take a motor that's making, you know, near 650 horsepower, uh, 640 something horsepower, and how do we make it into a uh, an 800 horsepower motor? <laughs> just, just simple. <laughs> All we got to do is add some nitrous to it. And that's exactly what we did. And voila, look. <laughs> so we added a, I think that this is a 150 shot. We're going to take a look at the jetting here. I don't remember specifically the jetting on this, but uh, yeah, it was 150 horsepower shot. Um, this one probably was an NOS setup or a ZEX setup. I'll go ahead and show a picture up here so you guys can see what it is. Simple plate system, dominator plate deal, you know, two solenoids, your typical kind of deal. And we did what Brulee always does when he runs these. I'm going to go ahead and move myself up here. We did what Brulee always does. We make sure that we flow the fuel uh, with a little flow orifice before we uh, inject anything. We make sure and purge it and test it before. And then we just kind of roll into it with the throttle. And then we get to a certain point, let's say 4,500. And then we, we nail the little button that's on the handle. I'll show you a photo right up here. The button that's on the handle. And then we just let the nitrous, you know, kind of do its thing. And it made a good power curve here as we see. Changing our 640-ish horsepower motor to something that made just a little over 800. So now it's time to jump up to 900. Okay, now it's time to step up to our 900 horsepower version. And actually, this thing didn't start out as a 900 horsepower version. But eventually, it was built up to that. It started out as... And they... I mean, let's face it, the easiest way to make lots and lots of power and the reason that we love big blocks, whether it's Ford or Chevy or Dodge or whatever, to begin with is because they're big. <laughs> it's much easier to make big power with big motors, and that's exactly what we did. So we took a 460 block and we bored and stroked it out to 557 cubic inches. So again, bigger, you know, bigger cylinder heads. It needs bigger cylinder heads, bigger camshaft, needs all of that stuff to support that additional displacement. And that's exactly what we did. So this one had, uh, this one, this motor started out pretty well. It had forged internals. It had a, a four and a half inch stroke, I believe, 12.5 uh, to one static compression pistons. It had a good size camshaft in it. It was a solid roller, 806, 763 lift split a 275, 284 degree duration split and 110 degree lobe separation angle. We had a really good cylinder heads on this. These were trick flow A460 CNC ported heads. So they flowed a ton enough to easily support this kind of power level. We also had um, the trick flow A460 tunnel ram intake manifold on it. So that's part of the testing that we did we did the tunnel ram versus a single four barrel and so we did a lot of stuff with this different kind of heads and stuff and it ended up at this kind of power level but we also ran uh, on top of that tunnel ram we had a lid set up to accept two dominator carburetors so it was dual 1050 holly ultra dominator just very very expensive induction system uh we had two and a quarter inch uh, chassis headers 18 inch collector extensions and msd distributor and all of that stuff um, you know, allowed us, <coughs> excuse me, all that allowed us to produce a good bit of power with this thing. I mean, it made very good power. We ran this, um, we also had a good uh, oiling system on this. We used uh, 1540 Lucas. We set our lash at 18 thousandths cold. This thing ran best at 33 degrees of timing. We had 77 jets in it for guys that are, I don't think about duplicating this. I normally don't do that on, on dyno stuff, but Run in this manner, our 900 horsepower combination did indeed exceed 900 horsepower, 929 horsepower out here at 71 or two, 7,100 RPM and peak torque checked in at 758 foot pounds at 5,900 RPM. So 
pretty good. All motor, no nitrous, big displacement, you know, and all the things that you need to go along with that. You need good head flow, you need a good induction system, you need a big camshaft, and you make good power. But let's find out how to make even more with our 1,000 horsepower combo. Okay, let's jump right into our 1,000 horsepower combination. This is actually another 557 cubic inch stroker big block forwards. We started out with a stock 460 block. It was bored to 444. We installed a four and a half inch stroke crank. This one was from the guys at Speedmaster who also supplied the forge rods and then Probe supplied the forge dish pistons that turned out to be 10 to one. In this case, we ran Kazi P51 heads, all obviously very good heads and with spring package set up for our solid roller cam. The solid roller cam was a 738-747 lift. It was a 272 to 80 degree duration split and 100 and 11 degree lobe separation angle. We had the crane also supplied the push rods. We had a double roller timing chain. We had the um, the 1.7 aluminum roller rockers. We had an Edelbrock Victor 4500 intake, meaning it was set up to accept a dominator carburetor. In this case, we ran a Holly Ultra Dominator 1150 carburetor, a uh, single, single four barrel deal. And we had a good oiling system on it run in this manner with the Kazi heads on this thing. It produced 754 horsepower and 713 foot-pounds of torque. And just like we had previously with our 800 horsepower combination, the way that we take a 750 horsepower motor and turn it into a 1000 horsepower motor, just add a little bit of nitrous. Pretty simple deal. Here's what happened when we added our nitrous. Although <laughs> in this particular instance, <laughs> And I almost didn't include this one, but it was a, it was a good motor. But uh, we didn't do the tune. We didn't get the tune spot on on our nitrous. We actually ran out of nitrous so that I couldn't continue the, with this testing. But it did make over a thousand horsepower. It made a uh, thousand twelve. And what we were doing was this. Uh, we were actually running out of nitrous, um, and the tune was also not great out at the top. It got fairly rich. But that probably was a function of us running out of nitrous and supplying the same amount of fuel. So you can see from this, had we had the the supply to the nitrous correct and had the tune correct, this thousand horsepower thing would just kind of continue to go out there because we added, um, it says a 150 shot. I think it was quite a bit bigger than that. Let's see what our jetting was. Yes, we had a... 65 fuel jet and it says a 72 uh, i mean a, a 72 fuel jet and 65 nitrous jet which seems like it's way off to me <laughs> and six and a half pounds of fuel pressure our, our bottle pressure started out at 900 psi that uh, seems like a little bit low also so there were obviously a couple of issues going on with this combination but you know going from 750 horsepower to 1,000 horsepower. Easy as just adding, you know, pushing the button on the nitrous setup. So let's step right up to our 1,100 horsepower nitrous setup. And I promise you this one goes a little better. Okay, guys, time to finish off strong with 1,100 horsepower next week. We're starting out with a motor that's very similar because this was originally our 900 horsepower version, but run in a different configuration. We didn't run it with a tunnel around. We also ran it with our single four barrel. So a 4,500 Dominator. Go ahead and take a look at our specs here to remind you. 557, I'm going to go ahead and swing myself up over here. 557 cubic inch 460 based stroker, 12 and a half to 1. Big cam in it, 806, 763 lift split, 275, 284 degree direction, and 110 degree lobe separation angle. We had our CNC ported trick flow A460 heads. We had a trick flow single plane intake manifold and a 1050 Holly Dominator, long dupe headers as always. And naturally this thing made more, I mean, less power with a single four barrel than it did previous with our uh, tunnel ram, but it still made good power starting out with 894 horsepower and 757 foot pounds of torque. But what we did as always on these things, we just, you know, push the easy button. Go ahead and swing myself over here. And all of a sudden, we're making lots of power. In fact, 1,135 horsepower. It did very well. So you can see we picked up a lot. That's kind of during the spike there, and it kind of leveled off. Um, but we made good power with this thing, and, you know, going from 900 to 1,100 horsepower. That's kind of a nice, good gain. And you, 
<laughs> you can do some serious damage with a motor, this a combination that's making this kind of power. So imagine this kind of deal in your typical, like, what if you put this in a Fox Mustang or something? I mean, you guys let me know in the comments, what do you think 1100 horsepower is going to do in like a Fox chassis besides kind of <laughs> twist it up and break rear ends and stuff? I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. All of our big block stuff has been covered for the Ford, except for boost, and that's got to be coming up, right?